he said, like, if he comes back around again, I'm going to have to, I mean, my drum set's right here. So right. guy comes back around and our drummer, like, goes to put this guy in a headlock, like, kind of just instead of just pushing him, like, just kind of grabs him, kind of trying to tell him to stop. And the the guys who, I guess, were with this dude started to, like, jump him and Jesus. started kind of, like, getting at him and stuff. So... Oh, Alter Beast was also on this tour. Um, so the uh, all the guys that are on, you know, on the package start to see this. So they start to kind of jump in, and then there's and there's video of this somewhere. But the guys in Borsa Blade that are playing a set, they see what's happening, and in the middle of their set, like put their instruments down and like jump into this brawl. <laughs> so now awesome, it's like dude. the Holy whole shit. tour package is brawling in a church. Welcome to the 41st episode of the Cassidens Creation. I'm your host, Chris Deering. This is the show where I interview bands and public figures from the MathCore and MathCore adjacent communities. Uh, if you beautiful people in chat have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in. I'll try to read them aloud. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, you get access to some exclusive emotes as well as access to all the interviews before they hit YouTube and other streaming services. If you'd like to uh, subscribe for free, you can just connect your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. It's like giving, getting $5 out of Jeff Bezos' pocket and putting it into mine. If you're watching this on YouTube, listening to this in your car, and have no idea what I'm talking about, the show is first shown live on Twitch. Join us every Sunday and Wednesday at twitch.tv slash the cast at creation for the live cast. With that out of the way, let me introduce our guest tonight, who dropped their third full-length album back in February. Ikikai, I think? Welcome in, John Matos of Abiotic. How's it going? How you doing, man? Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll get it out of the way. So it's Ikigai and uh, yeah, Ikigai. Thanks, thanks for, yeah, thanks for having me, man. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming on, dude. Like, it's amazing uh, to have you uh, have you on here. I think you're my biggest uh, biggest person I've interviewed, so that's fucking sweet. And you have oh, an awesome well, cool. Dragon Ball Z background. It's fucking great. Yeah, I had to do it. <laughs> I was doing the space, and I was like, oh, let me take this opportunity to kind of hang with some people I wish I could actually hang with. I saw that uh, shirt that you guys have, the Dragon Ball Z one. So this is very fitting. Yeah, yeah, we've got so we've got four of them right now. So I'm doing one. Uh, one for every Dragon Ball, where the O in our logo is one of the Dragon Balls. So we've done the one star all the way to the four star, and we're going to do all seven and then make it kind of a cool collector thing. Dude, that's sick. <laughs> so uh, first, why the name Abiotic? So uh, a couple of different reasons. So the band now has been around uh, for about 10 years. Um minus a little hiatus that we that we took but i was looking for something really trying you know fitting of the sound that we were going for so i i was looking like in a medical dictionary and found that obviously a and then b is the next letter so it's pretty high up in the, one of the first phrases that i found and it was uh definition was antagonist to life or opposed to it so i thought that was just cool as shit as far as like a definition goes and then um i'm also kind of the business guy in the band so i figured starts with the letter a the next letter is the letter b we're gonna we'll be at the top of everything alphabetically and it has a cool definition so that's kind of what we went with <laughs> dude that's tight that's tight I, it, I thought it was more like so it's really sciencey but you, you talk right. about a lot about like aliens and stuff and you know this newest one isn't necessarily scientific so like i kind of thought it might have been like an odd fit at the beginning of the band were y'all trying to do more like gore oriented stuff or yeah not necessarily gore but you kind of nailed it with like the uh sciencey spacey kind of you know the the sort of what's now the kind of typical typical sort of cliche tech death um you know sort of content so it's kind of what we were going for on the first record a little bit less of that on the second record and then on this record we were kind of just went went a total different direction as far as the theme goes uh so you guys started back in 2010 correct yeah yeah so um we were just a local band summer of uh 2010 okay uh, are we all just like friends growing up or how would y'all get together so I joined a band that was the band that then turned into Abiotic. Uh, we were called Behold the Ruins uh, before, and um, okay. Cross so of we the had Behold some. The Arctipus and within the ruins. What's that? Cross of Behold the Arctipus and within the ruins. Yeah, oh, okay. there you go. <laughs> um, so 
I, I joined that band and and it was just a couple of other guys and they were looking for somebody to come in and kind of take over songwriting and, and kind of really help with the direction that everything was going. So uh, we had some other bands in the local scene that we were like playing shows with and stuff like that. So once I started kind of making the moves and, and making the changes to the, the sound uh, in, in the project, that project with those guys, um, we ended up just kind of grabbing a couple of the really talented dudes from the other local bands. Um, so I was like, that guy's the sickest uh, vocalist. We should probably have him in the band if, if he wants to do it. That guy's really sick at guitar. Um, this guy's real sick at bass. And Alex, uh, the original bass player, was in that same behold the the ruins project with me so he was uh you know one of the og members too and then um yeah so we kind of just became like sort of the local band like super cliche term like super group if you will and um that's that's kind of how we got together uh how old were you guys at the time i'm 31 30 turning 32 now so um just okay. barely 21 20 okay so you had a little bit of adulting going on you weren't just like straight out of high school and into, into all this not just straight out of high school yeah, a little c couple of years of adulting but definitely still just like young n you know green guys like not knowing <laughs> shit about fuck <laughs> not knowing shit about fuck i like it uh y'all self-released your first ep a universal plague in, 20, in 2011 so this is the uh, 10 year anniversary it is it is yeah um and it, it's just crazy to think about that 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 was feel, it feels so long ago it also feels like yesterday um and still cool to see that that people like dig the songs off of that ep because all the songs on that ep ended up on our first record and then we just added a few other songs um so yeah those are the the og og songs you know songs that got got it all started do you still like that EP, like the production and all that stuff, or do you look back at it like, oh my god, what were you thinking? I, I a little bit of both for sure, and I, and I think that's, I don't know, I, I think if you ask anybody, pretty much, hey, what did you, what do you think of the first thing that you put out? Like they're gonna give you the same answer, um, and but but I do think that it did, it gave us really all the opportunities to get us to you know to where we are. Or, um, and, and all the amazing things that I've been able to do in the band over the years. So I'm super grateful for those songs, grateful for, uh, you know, the guys that were on that EP and on, on the subsequent record and, and the uh, engineers that, that worked on it and everything. So uh, it's still, still something I'm super proud of. And, and I know that without that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had any of the opportunities that, that I've got now, you know. Well, y'all definitely did something right because y'all released your debut full length on freaking Metal Blade, man. How did you do that? Go from like oh, local band to just like Metal Blade. It's the craziest story, man. So um, so we self-released that EP then, and I think that would have been like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, September, late um, 20, 2011. And then uh, February of 2012, we self-produced uh, and like released a music video for, for the single off of the EP uh, for Vermo Sapien. And that got some buzz um, on the internet and stuff. And I woke up one morning, went into, you know, where, like my music room in my house that I had set up. I had a little like laptop set up and everything. So went went into my laptop, was just kind of doing the, the usual stuff, hopped into my email. And I had an email from Metal Blade Records, just like, hey, what are you guys doing? Are you guys... Uh, available for tours like tell me what you got going on i saw this music video and and it's sick that's crazy and dude. nuts nuts just like were you all like you know, touring we, at that point no really uh, but yeah but i they said are you are you ready to tour like and i said absolutely and we didn't even we didn't have a van like we didn't have anything <laughs> so i just told i just said everything i needed to say um and then we went out we got a van um so that was we put out the the video in february by april 1st we were oh no it's january sorry so uh we put out the video in january by middle of february i was on the phone with metal blade we were signed in april jesus christ dude crazy like how did you put out the video you just put it to your own youtube account or like yeah how are you our really own, our own youtube account yep yep Holy so crap. and that's that's you when like no people know, again, in metal blade or something or no man wow. this is just a random like I, I don't know how this this was you know 10 years ago when there was like a such thing as organic reach 
So yeah. uh, there was organic reach. There were, you know, we had a lot of bands that we like looked up to that were just like posting about it and stuff. Like, I think, and I'm still friends with these guys today. Uh, the guys in Born of Osiris, they um, posted the music video when it dropped, and I think that kind of helped. The guys in Rings of Saturn posted it and things like that. So. It was, um, you know, when there was, if you had 50 or 60,000, you know, fans on your Facebook page, all those people saw your post. Okay. Um, so we, we were also opening up the big uh, local shows before that. So, um, you know, some of my favorite shows that I can still remember today just as a local band was um, we opened up for, uh, it was Within the Ruins, Tony Danza, Carnifex. Um, we played a with, sick lineup, it, shit. yeah, it was a really sick tour. Uh, I think Oceano might've been on that tour too. Um, we did impending doom. We did, um, a, a bunch of sick bands. And, um, I think that kind of helped build some of those relationships and stuff and, and people were digging the tunes and, um, yeah, it's just, it's so crazy how different it is now just because of how now everything for social media for bands and stuff is so monetized right. and you know anything with the word share like that all the shit now that gets nerfed even if you have the fans you know right it's pretty ridiculous I, like for that for the cast for instance i've started posting up metal memes because i find that people uh deal you know like that stuff more and then it'll drive them to like see my other content you know what i mean <laughs> that's the move man you gotta yeah you gotta like try and finesse it as much as you can and and the bands do it I, you know we do it i do that shit too and um you know it's it's a constant um constant battle of of trying to get your content out to the people who follow you which is still just right. so mind-blowing uh so you guys released another album on metal blade and then you guys broke up in 2016 what happened so it, it was a big mixture of things, man. So we, from the year that we got signed uh, until the year that we broke up, we were touring and recording nonstop. So there was like no break. So it was home for a month, out for a month, home for a month, out for a month, studio, home for a month, out for a month, like for almost five years. Jeez. So um, it, was, it was, we were just burnt out. Um, it was a combination of that, a combination of maybe some not so great business decisions, business decisions on our part, because we were still, again, very green, not really a lot of um, direction um, or, you know, we, we did some things that now in retrospect, it's like, shit, I probably wouldn't have done that if um, I, I had the, the, the information, you know, that, that I do now. So um, that member changes, like all kinds of stuff just kind of came to to a head. And, and all of us were just like, well, you know, we we got to get our shit together. We all of us have to get our lives together. It's been, you know, it, it's been as long as it's been. And we just need to figure some shit out. So we we decided that maybe now was the best time to just set it down and let everybody kind of focus on their lives and on their personal lives and really, you know, make men's to relationships that may have been hurt and strained because, uh, we were out for so long and, and, um, you know, it, it, all kinds of things that come along with trying to, um, you know, fulfill your, your dreams and, and live your dreams and all the sacrifices you have to make, which in turn affect the people that you love. So, we, we we took that break and and then I stayed in contact with our our now vocalist uh, who first uh, you know showed up on on that second record Travis and he had seen me um, just still working on some like solo music and stuff like that and he was like dude let's just like put out a record like let's just come back and like put out a record we can be a fucking internet band or something but you know you've got material I want to do it like let's just do it and it didn't take too much twist in my arm because I was already getting the, the itch to, to kind of do some stuff again. And I was for sure in a much better place. He was in a much better place. And uh, so we got back with our original, you know, guitar player, Matt, um, who 
again, has been with us since the the beginning and him and I just work so well together. So I was, I was honestly ready to do this with just by myself and uh, cause I wasn't really sure where he was going to be, if he was going to want to do it even. So when I talked to him, he, he was down and I was just so happy because, you know, I feel like him and I work so well together. And then, um, then for bass and drums, the, you know, those were the kind of two spots that we were needing to fill. So we grabbed, got super lucky. I, I moved up from Florida to Massachusetts, and I, through some friends, met Killian Duarte, who plays bass for Scale the Summit, and uh, oh, okay. he's phenomenal. And then through him, met our now drummer, Tony, who plays in all kinds of bands. He, he plays uh, most notably in a band called uh, Pathogenic. Oh, okay, and sick band. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 real sick, and uh, yeah, that's that's kind of the whole the whole journey there. Nice. So well, I'm glad that y'all like realized that there were problems and issues y'all needed to fix, rather than just like imploding and just cratering and never like talking to each other again. So uh, it's, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, yeah, me too. And and it 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 was tough. It was tough for a lot of us. And um, you know, for for me, like I mentioned before, I was kind of the. Uh, I was making a lot of the decisions then as I, you know, as I kind of still do now. And you take a lot of that on, you know, if, if I'm making the decisions, we're not where we all kind of expect it to be, which is another one of those things that's, you know, you, you've got to taper your expectations and, and, um, but you feel like you're letting people down. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a tough thing, but I'm happy that now we're all taking this as seriously as we did before where um you know in it and our hearts are in it as much as it was before but our it, it our, it's not like our lives don't depend on it like it did before it for before it was just like fuck if this doesn't go how we need it to what are we going to do now it's not like that so we've got it, it's it feels more comfortable it just feels it feels right okay uh were y'all like making like a, a living off of the band before or we all, like not not quite there doing odd jobs not quite there man yeah yeah it's it's it, you know w w all of us were if we were home for a month all of us were working odd jobs whatever we could get our hands on that's, that's uh when weird. we yeah when we were out um it was making enough to continue to tour making enough to kind of feed ourselves put gas in the van get you know continue to buy merch and and have fresh merch designs it was really just kind of reinvesting into the band all, all the things that you need to invest in uh to be able to continue successfully so um not not quite yet we were we were getting there kind of at a, a sort of a tipping point but um it it does take it, it's like any other business where it takes time and money um it takes a time and money investment to be able to see a, a return right well, uh, you guys got a new album out, uh, Iggy Kai. I'm saying that right, right? Iggy Kai. Icky guy. Icky guy. Uh, okay. I, yeah, think about it like an icky guy, a guy that is like he's icky, <laughs> okay. he's gross. Okay, I got an image. I got an image <laughs> of one in my head. Um, so you guys put this one out on uh, Art Artisan Era Records. Uh, yep. I, that's like an affiliate of Metal Blade, correct? They're not. No. So yeah, okay, Artisan is right. is its its own thing, and okay. um, yeah, they're they're awesome. It's they are owned by the guitar players from the band in fury okay so it's uh malcolm and, and mike and they are awesome they've got a ton of really sweet death metal technical you know tech death bands and things like that so it's like them they've got equipoise augury flub um buddies of mine from massachusetts myth of i so shout out to them and uh, a lot of really cool bands they definitely have their own sound like the uh kind of melodic tech death core type of thing yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, I think they've carved out a, a niche for sure. And um, their community, they just have like a really like diehard community of people that that follow the label. Right. Um, so they're, uh, you know, I think Artisan is, is definitely one of the bigger up and coming labels for sure, which is why we decided to to kind of uh, join them and and uh, put together this album. Nice. Um, what does Ikigai mean? So it translates from Japanese to a reason for being. So it's um, kind of finding your your reason for being. And um, in, in Japanese, it's it's like um, there's like three things. It's like the things that you like, uh, the things that bring you money, and then the things that um, 
I think the third one is like things that you're good at or so the things that you're good at, you might not necessarily like the things that you like may not necessarily bring you money. And, and there's kind of that, that whole, that whole thing. And, okay. um, so, but more like metaphorically, it's, it's finding, you know, your, your reason to, to go on. And I felt like it was very, uh, poignant, you know, it, given, given the times. Okay. Uh, what's different this time around? Um, as far as like musically yeah, or, music. or lyrically or what do you mean? Uh, it'll be everything. Well, uh, not lyrically because that's obviously different, but, uh, musically. Yeah. Musically, um, so we this this was the first time that we really had a lot of time to put together an album. Before, like I mentioned before, it was it was um, you know in deadlines between tour cycles, stuff. deadlines exactly. So we we um, had more time to really hone the songs in to track demos for the entire record, pass them back and forth, make tweaks, make changes, um, really listen to things as a listener. And and also working with our drummer Tony, who's a sound engineer, um, you know, having his prowess, uh, you know, uh, in, with engineering was also a, a huge, huge thing for us because we, for the first record, again, Green, we just wrote everything in a warehouse, sitting all five of us together, just playing the songs, writing, playing it over and over and over and uh not really hearing the songs as a listener then on the second record we got a little bit better like some of us started to learn how to do a little bit of home production stuff but it was still very like not good um but now we were able to like really get a sense of what these songs are going to sound like before we did final uh tracking and, and everything like that and made a world of difference for sure i like the way of just saying that listening to it as a listener um i find yeah. whenever i'm writing stuff like back when i was uh starting out i would listen to songs so many times it would just get stuck in my head and then i would think oh because it's stuck in my head it's a good song but really it's just because i listened to it so many times is that right. what you mean by listening to it like a listener i mean more so like from when we first started out was it was us playing the songs we wrote and that was really the only way that we could listen to them and see what we liked what we didn't what okay. fit trying to put a new part in so it was let's say we've got this new part oh i really want to put this part in the song i think it'll fit let's put it in between these two riffs all right ready let's start the song from the beginning four count on the on the <laughs> hi hat not like hey let's throw this song i'm going to track this riff write some drums to it put it into the recording software, put it in between those two riffs, sit back, press play, and make sure that it makes sense and make sure that I like it and see what else we can do to it. What can we do to change it? it it's just when, when you learn how to do that, it's, it's, a, it's a whole different ball game. And um, that's like a, a piece of advice that I would give to myself 10 years ago um, is just like kind of bite that, that bullet and just get that little those few little pieces of engineering equipment that you need and just learn how to record yourself it's super daunting when you don't know what you're doing but just like an instrument just like anything you put a little bit of time into it there's a learning curve and then you start to get comfortable you start to you know have tip your little tricks that you know how to get what you need out of it and then it it, it really really does help Right. Uh, well, it definitely shows with this new one. This has to be your best material. Uh, I would say it's more like there's more catchy moments than there were on your previous stuff. Uh, flows a little bit better. So uh, yeah, honestly, this is this is definitely some good stuff. Um, another you, thing that y'all are doing, I'm pretty sure it's the first time, is clean singing. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So we did some like kind of faceless rip offy like robotic stuff on on the first one. Um, which I'm still a fan of and, and always a fan of. But for this one, yeah, we, we tapped um, Jonathan Carpenter, who used to sing for The Contortionist. He was uh, on that record, Exoplanet, and then the one after that one, um, oh, fuck, Intrinsic. And always a big fan of, of his vocals. He's got like a very cynic kind of vibe to him. So I wanted to do something different. And uh, so we, you know, asked him, hey, would you be down to do some clean vocals and sing a hook on this song and, you know, potentially close it out? And he was down and, and crushed it. I, I 
I'm so stoked on it and also stoked at the response too because I was going to ask you about the response yeah 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 I mean everybody it's one of those things where you read like comments and whatever and and I try not to you know give too much weight to that stuff because if you're going to pay attention to the good comments if you're going to give them some weight you got to give that same weight to the bad comments so I try not to to you know give them too much weight either way but um, was it more good comments than bad comments or from I mean yeah and and just seeing people like understand what we were going for and you know it wasn't just like I all the guys are like hey we're gonna do this and it's probably gonna piss off some of those like elitist dudes that are like oh there's clean vocals in my tech death I this I hate this <laughs> and I, I really didn't see anything like that so it was it was really awesome we love it which is the main thing is is you know I, I want to do more of it honestly and um was yeah i was just super super stoked on how it came out and also i was really uh glad that we put that song later in the album to have it really be a, a surprise right well uh fuck those elitists anyway man like yeah, yeah just do, agreed do what, what, what makes you happy you know <laughs> exactly um you also got a new logo uh well sort of new logo uh you got we're showing it on screen now uh you yep. got like this little symbol inside of the O. What what's the symbol? I I kind of thought it might be supposed to say uh, Icky Guy on it, but I can't figure it out. So uh, what, what yeah, no, it doesn't. It's it's um that's an emblem that was made for us by the same artist who uh, designed the cover. I really need to talk with him because I butcher his name pronunciation every time. So I should probably know how to actually pronounce his name. Kalen Stockerman. Uh, Kalen Stockermans or Stokermans. Um, either way, dude is insanely talented. Um, you know, he really collaborating with him to bring the cover to life uh, was another one of those things where really with every everything on the record, I was like, I want to do it different. So and that started with the art. And I feel like not a lot of bands in, in kind of the genre that we're in have a cover like ours and that's was like one of the uh, we set out to do that so right it's always um, some like amorphous like monster in space or something right 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 which i think is sick nothing against that um but when but, like the yeah. 500th band does it you know what i mean you just get kind of right lost. right exactly so you know i, I figured you know not only it, it's a comeback record really for us and um so i wanted to have something different have something stand out have something that uh, you could look at and would draw some emotion. That was a big thing that we were going for. Is like, you know, we, we want to be able to draw some emotion, even starting before you listen to the album, just from the art. So big shout out to him. Um, and yeah, he designed that that emblem for us. Um, that we kind of just started to use a little bit loosely, and then we're like, okay, cool. We want to put that in the middle of the logo, just replace our usual O. Um, and I, I think it's, I think it's rad. We had always considered like, should we change the logo? We've had the same logo for 10 plus years. Um, typically at this point, bands will kind of do a little revamp and stuff. So really, but oh, I dude, think, this is great. Yeah. Don't, don't mess with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, uh, I think that's subtle enough to have again, something new and, and, and fresh, but keep that same logo, which we've always, you know, gotten pretty good feedback on because you, it's legible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And yeah. it's like, uh, sort of sort of symmetrical but not really like i don't know it's it's mm -hmm. very uh, interesting more interesting than a bunch of other bands that you know put out like just these unreadable logos but so what oh, does the emblem true. mean exactly uh it doesn't really have a a, a meaning to it honestly it oh, was, okay. it was it just, just more cool. more an aesthetic thing that we we wanted to have for uh, all of our new merch and kind of just us going forward we wanted to have a symbol that um you know we could put on things put on patches put on and, and you know you could relate to the band basically okay are y'all gonna be using this from now on like uh, if you do another record about like space or whatever like is a this emblem gonna be in the middle of your o i'd say so yeah okay you should uh, have some some meaning behind it what like make up something at least i'm gonna make something up that's a good <laughs> idea <laughs> uh, so what are uh, your main influences nowadays y'all are probably an influence on a lot of other people but for, for you, what, oh, what would thanks, your influences man. be? Um, yeah, I uh, I draw a lot of influence from a lot of different places. Um, so definitely like all the the shred guitar players, so like uh, Guthrie Govan and um, Steve Vai and uh, 
you know, all, all the classic guys, Ingve Malmsteen, all, all those, Paul Gilbert, uh, Jason Becker, all those guys. Um, and then the classic, like, tech death bands. So uh, Necrophagist and um, The Faceless and Cynic and um, Death, uh, all, all those classics. And then I also, like, listen to, um, like, jazz and, like, you know, hip hop and, and all kinds of different things. I, uh, I, I try, especially when we're writing not to listen to metal and not to listen to things just to not accidentally rip somebody off. <laughs> um, you, you can really do it subconsciously. Um, and I've done it before. Like, uh, I, I play the sound that ends creation. I don't know if you've heard it, but, uh, I've had songs where like half of it will be just a rip from some other band. Yeah, and you don't even realize until like you're done with the song, and then someone's like, "Huh, that that kind of sounds like like this," and you're like, "Oh shit, I was listening to that album all like that whole year it came out. That makes sense, or you know what whatever." But um, and then there's there's like um, and hopefully people can hear it on this song because we're not or on this album because we're definitely not shy about it. But Gojira is a huge a huge influence too, and um, the the whole you kind of touched on a little bit earlier, but like the whole um, idea going into the record was we want to, you know, have our, our signature sound, of course, like what people have, have, you know, grown and, and come to like love about us. Um, but we want to write catchier stuff. Like I want to write catchy death metal or catchy technical stuff. Like I don't want to just wank. I don't want to, you know, a song to be over and you can't remember a part like that exactly. to me is if, if the song's done and you don't, you're not humming something, then back to the drawing board, you know? Right. Right. That, that's uh, really how you stick in somebody's head, you know, like, I mean, literally, I guess with a catchy song, but uh, yeah. that's how people remember you. You know what I mean? You, just, you don't want it to be like a, just a blur. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of tech right. bands sound like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it it's, you have to play the balancing act. People like the technicality. I'm one of those guys too. I love listening to, to technical music. It's as a guitar player, as a musician, it's, it's what, you know, catches my ear and it's what's fun for me. But also as I grew as a musician, it was just, oh, well, I, I really want to write memorable stuff. And that goes from my solos to the songs, to, you know, helping with vocal lines, all that stuff. Do you write the vocals? Uh, uh excuse me. Um, on this one, I, I I helped with with a lot of it. Okay. I wrote I wrote lyrics for a couple of the songs. Um, worked with our vocalist Travis on a lot of the the patterns and and different things like that. And um, so that that's a really fun part for me. Again, you know, just putting on a different hat and uh, trying to serve the song in the the best way that you can, and then also have dynamics and you know again make it memorable try and I, I really wanted the vocals to really just be like hook driven on on each song like have the memorable parts that again people are gonna be singing back when when they're done right um it's, that's a good transition into the next part because i was gonna ask about your writing process it kind of seems like you're the uh leader of the band that you probably write most of the material is that, is that true ish so it's a really big collaboration our, our other guitar player matt he's a, a riff monster um and wrote a, a lot of the riffs on it so i definitely won't take all of the credit for for uh doing the writing is and then tony have played a huge huge part on it too like i said we would send him demos of songs and since he's such a whiz um you know behind behind the mouse he would say oh cool that's a cool song and then a week later would send us like the version 7.0 of that song and it's just more than we could have ever even dreamed of is and that like hap i felt like that happened with every song like we'd send them matt and i would work on something send it to tony and he would like just fucking i don't know do chef stuff it, it was like giving it was like giving um giving a chef you know materials and and uh ingredients and <laughs> he just like m made each took each song to the next level so um yeah I, I think where where i sort of excel is kind of in um more of a composer mode where like i can someone will bring like a, a half finished song or and i'll say hey that part that you played one time that should be the hook 
So let's figure out a way to repeat that. Let's figure out a way to make that section longer and, and make it because that for me, that's going to be the memorable part. So let's, let's make that happen. And, um, so it's a bit big collaborative process. It's a lot of fun. Well, that's cool, man. How long were y'all, uh, writing this for? So we put out a single, um, which wasn't on this album about two years ago now called Emerald. Um, and decided not to put that on this album so we really started kind of digging into this um after we dropped emerald and then we all kind of had some material like in the bag like i was working on stuff just at home on my own even before uh we kind of decided to get back together so i had some old files saved up matt had some old files saved up and things like that so it's you know anywhere between two and and four years honestly Damn, dude. Uh, it kind of seemed like y'all would have been longer, but I guess you have to, like, stop and submit it to labels and shit like that. So I, I see that. Yeah, and, and we just took our time, right? Because we were in the, you know, the, the pandemic and, um, you know, we were all the mindset of we, we really got to make sure that this album doesn't suck. So, uh, <laughs> we yeah, we, we there, there wasn't a rush, really. We wanted to take our time and just kind of hone it, really hone it in. So this is a concept album, right? Uh, loosely. So there's there's a general like overarching theme. There's some story elements in it, but I'm gonna be showing um, music videos while you're talking about it, just to, just letting you know. Yeah, yeah, sure. So. Uh, like we talked about before, so Ikigai, it's, it's reason for being. So the cover of the record um, shows a samurai uh, committing seppuku, right? So Oh, okay, so that's what that is. Dude, I thought he just didn't know how to handle his sword. I'm like, why is he holding <laughs> by the blade and his blood coming out of his hand? Okay, that's okay, not, that makes that's, so that's, much it's more not, sense. It's not supposed to go in his stomach. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's, he's uh, you know, committing that, that, final, that final act. So uh, some of the songs will talk about him where he is specifically what he's going through and then the the whole overarching kind of more metaphorical theme of the album is um is finding your reason for being right so uh in the moments that he's committing seppuku kind of you know ending his life he's living a multitude of different lives like of uh you know different lives that he would have lived in his head so uh some of those are uh a trans someone who's trans and, and is uh dealing with with family that is ostracizing them someone who's got an abusive family someone going through um addiction uh, animals dealing with the effects of climate change. So those are all different topics of each of the songs, and they're all things he's living through before he finally dies. Yeah. Then last song is um, him having lived through these, uh, you know, things and seeing these uh, stories play out and these people being persevere, you know, fight through these uh, challenges and finding their reason for being he finds his but it's too late oh, okay dude that's awesome that's a really cool story how did y'all come up with the whole like japanese thing and uh yeah where would that all come from uh so i've been a huge fan of japanese music and culture and and for as long as i can remember i mean obviously you see the dragon ball background um i've you know been a big fan of anime since i was a kid and um yeah it, it really started with like the music i would you know Sometimes we'll throw on some like random like traditional Japanese music when when I'm at home just to kind of like relax and vibe. Really? And uh, yeah, That's yeah. I, I love the different instruments, and I I wanted to at first it was like I want to throw like just world instruments on an, a death metal album. Like I want like flutes, and I want you know I, I was really just for a little while just like looking up strange instruments and trying to find people who played them. That's um, sick. But. But where it landed was I got a buddy who plays uh, flutes and he's got really, really sick, like all kinds of sick flutes. And I was like, hey, man, like play, play me some stuff, like just track some stuff and uh, I'll figure out a way to put it on the record. 
I've never heard and somebody describe a flute as sick before. So, dude, that's I, cool. I, I, I fucking love it. And and I hadn't really heard it done before either. So I was like, let's see. I, I would love to hear what it sounds like in a super heavy context. So like, you know, to put flutes like in a breakdown or something or like in a, you know, in, in a technical part. Um, and then we kind of ran with it. So we, we had the musical aspect. I was like, I, I read about this term Ikigai that I thought was really cool. Um, I think it would be a really cool name for an album. And then we kind of just like really built everything around, around that. Okay. I, I honestly didn't remember hearing too much flute except for like the intro track. Is it? Yeah, like, it was a little subtle. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit subtle. So so we did the intro track um, on the title track. It's like all throughout the title track, and then um, we kind of just mixed in more like piano, violin, orchestration. I remember stuff like the violin and stuff like that. I I, mm -hmm. I guess I missed the flute. I need to go back and check that out. Yeah. So you got like flute, violin, and what what other kind of instruments? Um, so flute was the was really the only one that was uh, played by by somebody. So uh, my buddy Dallas Brown, he he recorded the flutes that were on uh, the intro track and then the the title track, um, and then Tony did all the other orchestration, piano, violin, choruses, okay. all that cool stuff. That's sick, man. Uh, so your drummer did all the videos, like he animated that shit. That's crazy, man. How long did it take y'all to get these together? Or him, I guess, to uh, get these together. I mean, obviously he, he's a better person to ask, but I know like hundreds of hours probably right? or you Jesus. know in the 100 to 200 hour range for sure not not only that so you know i i've done some interviews during the cycle and i just always have to make sure that i give this guy his his, his due so right. he did what he did in um you know helping the songs get to the level that that i think they are he recorded engineered mixed and mastered the whole album and then he also did the music videos. Right. So yeah, that's crazy, dude. Like, is this the first time that he's done like an album, like a recorded and all that stuff and done an album for you guys? No. Well, for us, yeah. But um, he he's, you know, been doing the engineering thing for a little while now, right. um, more out of the, the Massachusetts area and things like that. So um, was really awesome to be able to give him a platform so to uh, become, you know, better known. So, um, you know, because he did our music videos and kind of engineered some stuff for us. He he just did music videos for uh, that band Brand of Sacrifice that just put out a, a, okay. a real sick album. So um, yeah, I mean, the dude is super talented, so I'm just glad he's finally getting a little bit of recognition. Does he have like a, a design, like uh, what do you call it, brand or anything like that? Yeah, it's called Zen Beast Media. Uh, you'll see it probably in the description of all the music videos. Okay, I'm actually writing that down because this is sick as hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you guys got a bunch of guest appearances on here. Uh, who, who's uh, who's involved? So, we've got uh, Trevor Sternad from the Black Dahlia Murder. We've got Brandon Ellis also from the Black Dahlia Murder, and big shout out to both of those guys. Brandon in particular, as well, is probably one of my favorite guitar players right now. Um, Jonathan Carpenter, like we talked about. We've got uh, Scott Carstairs from Fallujah. Uh, Chaney Crab, who does vocals for the band Entheos, and she's amazing. And uh, Jared Smith, who plays bass in the band Archspire. Damn, dude, that's a lot of uh, guests. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Another... Guess... No, go uh, ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I guess this is all like... Uh, from these are bands that you like toured with and stuff. So these are like uh, friendships y'all have had for a long time. Then, pretty much the the Black Dahlia guys. We I, I like knew them like we we're sort of acquaintances. But having Trevor on an album was always a, a dream of mine. So it's kind of like I was telling you before. You, you ask, and the worst thing that someone's gonna say is no. Right. And uh, Trevor's the coolest dude, and and he was super down to do it, and uh, really uh, enjoyed the song and and backed the band, and it was just really awesome. Like, you know, we when we signed the Metal Blade, that was the whole thing. It's like, fuck, like, how do we be like Black Dahlia? Like, they're sick, they're super successful. Like, how how do we do that? So it's pretty. It was like some bucket list shit to have him on the record. Um, and then yeah, the other the other folks amazing super talented and also um you know lucky to call those those people friends as well and um 
Yeah, I was just gonna say it, just another thing I wanted to do different on this album, like have a shit ton of features because a lot of bands don't do that. A lot of bands will have a couple or I just wanted to like kind of go balls to the wall with the features. Nice, it's like a uh, community effort, sort of. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, Cricket Slams in the chat's asking, who in the band came up with a Diablo 2 shirt and naming a song the Horadic Cube? Horadric Cube. I have no idea what that means, by the way. Uh, so, Diablo 2 reference. Um, I'm a huge uh, Diablo fan. I've been playing since I was a kid. I played Diablo 1, uh, played Diablo 2 to fucking death. And um, our vocalist, Travis, he, he was a fan as well. So, we were. We were loosely calling the song uh, Deckard Kane, which is a character from, it was just like kind of one of the stupid names that we made for the song before we actually titled everything. And we wanted to, we decided to just like keep the the Diablo theme. And the tra Haradra Cube is a, uh, it's an item that transforms, it gets multiple items and will transform it into something new. Um, so Travis wrote the song kind of around that and um yeah just putting putting together the uh diablo 2 shirt um was kind of a no-brainer after that and it's it's uh, been super popular so if you're into diablo and you i don't know haven't heard us and, and you like the music after uh checking this out go to our indie merch store um and grab that diablo 2 shirt because yeah it's doing well and it'll probably sell out <laughs> Are you uh, getting fans of Diablo that have no idea who you guys are, like buying the shirts and stuff? Yeah, it, se it seems so. So, um, <laughs> yeah, th that's one of those fun, fun things like crossovers that I I've liked to do since the beginning. So, um, and that's more honestly, like it's like 95% self-serving. I just like put together merch that I would wear, <laughs> that I want to wear. So we've got like the Dragon Ball shirts. We've got uh, this Diablo shirt. We've got, um, we did a Mortal Kombat one. I did a Spider-Man one. Y'all ever like um, worried about cease and desist orders or the same fucking, um, like bring on the suit? <laughs> <laughs> they're likenesses. It's not actually any of those characters, right? It's just, they yeah. just kind of look like them. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, so you guys have obviously played a shit ton of shows. Uh, what's the best show you played? That's a tough one. Um, we've played a few. We, we were uh, regional guests on uh, a couple of the Summer Slaughter tours. So we did, we played, one of the more memorable ones was uh, House of Blues in Orlando, which is on the Disney World property. So I'm oh, from... Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm from Miami, Florida. So I've been going to Disney World. It's like three hours away, like my whole life. So to be able to play like at Disney by itself was, was fucking crazy. And then headlining was, um, I think it was for that one, I think it was uh, BT Bam, so Between the Bird and Me and Cannibal Corpse. Um, Animals Dude, Leaders crazy. was on that show. <laughs> Periphery was on that show. Uh, it was fucking crazy and, you know, really sick venue, amazing crowd. Um, and yeah, just getting to play with like fucking legends and stuff. So. I hear that, that Disney is very uh, specific about who they'll let play. Did they give you any crap? They didn't give us because our name is it, probably nobody knows what it means. But for for that show, um, cattle decapitation was supposed to be on that is on was on the tour supposed to be on that show, and so was uh, that artist murder. And those two bands didn't get to play really because but they let Disney, Cannibal Corpse yeah. play. I mean, they're a headliner. What are they going to do? But yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's hilarious. Um, so Wheeler Dealer asks, besides Dragon Ball, what's your favorite anime? Um, I'm a big fan of Trigun. Uh, really, really enjoy Trigun. I like Death Note. Uh, I'm a big uh, uh, Naruto fan. I've been watching, I was watching Naruto since I was like 15 years old. Um, Attack on Titan. Um, Dude, hell yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I'm not. I, or I guess as I've gotten older, I kind of haven't sought out too many new animes. But um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a. I'm a big fan. I've got like tattoos and stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, show yeah. us, show us. Come on, man. Uh they're they're on my legs. So it'll be. Oh, okay. it'll be but um, 
I don't know if maybe you can see this one. For Naruto fans, I've got like a a cursed seal right over here. So if you've ever seen the anime. I haven't. I haven't. Isn't that the one for like little <laughs> kids? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, cricket, apparently we got some hype for uh, Diablo 2 remake in Diablo 4. You, you play Diablo still? Yeah, yeah. So I played 3 and, and it was okay. I mean, it was... it. it um, scratch that itch that I had from from two um, but yeah when I saw that they were gonna be remaking two I was like way pumped um, and then obviously four I'm, I'm stoked for four just to kind of see where where they take everything um, but yeah I mean I'm, I'm I will definitely definitely be paying playing the uh, the remake oh yeah we're at the yeah, part I'm, in the I'm, music I'm, video where he's fighting the uh, the griffin thing. The, the griffin. God damn, dude, that's just so Let's sick! See. Like, holy Let's crap! See what, see what kind of loot it drops. But um, I'm I'm following along on, on the Twitch chat, um, and someone says try One Piece, and then someone else says one does not just try right. One Piece. That's exactly Isn't that why one of those I haven't like watched One Piece. Episodes or some shit. There's like 500 episodes. It's the same reason that I didn't get into. Um, uh got bleach um which i watched like the first season and was sick and everything and then i found out how many episodes it was and i was so uh committed to naruto at the time and i was just like i can't like commit my life to so much <laughs> to, to so many shows so, you're able to climb um, out of that hole just in time before i grabbed a hold of you then huh right exactly <laughs> <laughs> he says we're up over 800 episodes i think goodness gracious that's ridiculous dude uh, so back to shows. What was the worst show you played? Ooh, um, hmm. Yeah, man. Come coming up, I've we we played our our fair share of just shitty to nobody shows. Um, hmm. But the uh, it's hard to hard to pinpoint a a worst one, but um, I I can think of one that was like pretty much anytime you've got to play a, f a show where there's no stage and no monitors is kind of the worst show because you can't hear yourself and um it, it, it and if, if you're playing in a place that it's just like all concrete there's just like tons of reverb and like just it, you know it doesn't sound good but you're trying to make the best of it um so had a had a couple of shows like that but Really, never for, anything for like, with like bad interactions with fans or anything like that. Not, mm, not that I can Any, think like, of. Any like beefs not, with bands not, and shit. What's that? Any like beefs with other bands and stuff or beefs with other bands? No, man. I mean, we we really tried to make it a point to be the professional band on tour, to be the band that's like, oh, those guys are super easy to work with. So we we you know really really made it a point to to do that and um just go in there you know get to work and have fun and and be but again be professional get on the stage when you need to get off the stage when you need to um be have you know have a pair of hands to help if somebody needs help um and you know more often than not e even if you don't love some of the people you're on tour with you find a guy or two in basically every band that you're like holy shit you're like my best friend on this tour let's hang out and let's smoke weed every day um <laughs> and uh that's that's really the fun part the the drama and, and everything we really just tried to stay away from it we we some of us like kind of like to rage a little bit but we were never like a huge huge party band so you know that's that i feel like is where a lot of the kind of crazy things start to come into play it's when like dudes are getting fucking sloshed and um sloshed. You know, what do you mean by that yeah like drunk out of their minds and, okay, um, okay. you know <laughs> inhibitions out the window and you're just you know so we weren't we weren't ever really those guys um and which well you I, are florida men right so like there's got to be a little bit of that in there right <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> uh that's a really awesome attitude to have though uh i'm, I'm glad that you can't think of a of a worst show so uh that's good what about the yeah. weirdest place you've played the weirdest place besides um, disney world because it's pretty weird <laughs> <laughs> um anytime you play a church it feels weird so we played a couple of churches uh we played actually um and and this wasn't really necessarily 
I guess this, this kind of uh, touches on maybe this is kind of a bad show. Um, so, and it ties into the weird place because it was at a church. Um, and it was also a floor show. Oh, man. All of the <laughs> everything converging. Taking off all the boxes, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we were on tour with uh, Boris the Blade from Australia. Super duper heavy deathcore band. And, um, and Reaping as Medea okay. was... Uh, yeah, it was one of the openers. And um, so, like I said, it, it, this was in Colorado. I want to say it was in Denver. And we played our set. It places place is pretty packed. It's it's But again, it's a floor show. So not really much place to put gear. Gear is lining the walls. There's, you know, t- tons of people and stuff. So um, our drummer has his drum kit up against the wall, which is probably one row of people um there's one row of people in between the pit and his drum kit and then the wall so he's kind of standing in front of his kit during boris the blade set because he's afraid something's gonna happen to it people are kind of doing their thing they're doing their like crowd killing bullshit like kind of throwing themselves against people that are kind of just standing there so guy comes and like throws himself against our drummer who's trying to protect his drum set so he like pushes that guy back into the pit the guy comes back around he does it again and then he said like if he comes back around again i'm gonna have to i mean my drum set's right here so guy comes back around and our drummer like goes to put this guy in a headlock like kind of just instead of just pushing him like just kind of grabs him kind of trying to tell him to stop and the the guys who I guess we're with this dude started to like jump him and Jesus. started kind of like getting at him and stuff. So, Oh, Alter beast was also on this tour. Um, so the, uh, all the guys that are on, you know, on the package start to see this. So they start to kind of jump in and then there's, and there's video of this somewhere, but the guys in Borsa blade that are playing a set, they see what's happening and in the middle of their set like put their instruments down and like jump into this brawl (laughs) so now it's like the whole tour package is brawling in a church and um (laughs) the the, my favorite part of the story uh and it's just because our me and our vocalists have a fun relationship where we just give each other shit all the time and so someone is is grabbing somebody from one of the other bands um, so our vocalist Travis grabs that guy and like he's behind him, grabs him by the shoulder to, and like tries to like get him off of this guy. Ends up turning the guy around, and as soon as the guy turns around, he just like punches Travis right in the forehead. Oh. Um, also, really awesome part about this is that while all this is happening, I'm smoking weed somewhere. So <laughs> far I get away back. From the madness. I like it. <laughs> I yeah, I get back and I'm just like, oh man, like what the fuck happened? And someone's like, oh dude, this crazy brawl. I'm like, oh no. And, and they're like, yeah, and Travis got punched in the head. I just like lose it laughing. So it, was, <laughs> it was a very that that was a, a, a fun memory for sure. <laughs> dude, that's insane. Holy crap. <laughs> uh chat's still going on about anime. So subs or cool. dubs? Oh, uh, subs for everything that's not Dragon Ball. Okay. Um, and I'll watch Dragon Ball with subs, no problem. But I do have a special place for the um, dubbed uh, Dragon Ball. Because you like listen uh, or watched it like that when you were growing up? Yeah, I watched it like that when I was growing up. And um, I think it's one of the few um, animes that gets dubbed and it was done justice. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I had an opportunity to meet. Bebop dub. Yeah, Cowboy Bebop too. Um, I I had an opportunity to meet uh, Sean Schemmel, who plays Goku, at a at a music convention, and dude, super cool. So it kind of just solidified for me. I was like, okay, I this is great. <laughs> dude, that's sick, man. You go to a lot of conventions and stuff. Uh, I try and go to to the Nam convention, um, which again, you know, I would have hopefully been gone this year, but um, that obviously didn't happen. But that's just like the. Uh, North American musicians, something or other. It's just like uh, where all the music companies in, in uh, California, they get together to kind of showcase their new material, their, their new um, product lines. And, you know, all of the endorsers of, of those companies are out there. So it's kind of one of those like the who's who um, situations. And um, when I went a couple of years ago, Sean happened to, happened to be there and 
one of my buddies saw him and knew how big of a Dragon Ball fan I was. And um, he was like, dude, I know we're here and I know there's like really sick musicians and all that stuff, whatever. You need to go over there and talk to him. And I was like, Who? And, I, and he was like, dude, that's Sean Shemmel. I was like, oh shit. And I talked to him for like 20 minutes. And a uh, cool part of that story is I've got a, a Vegeta tattoo on my shin and um, we were talking, I was, I was showing him and he, he took a picture and texted it to Chris Sabat who plays Vegeta. So I was super pumped about that. That's sick, man. So do you, are you like endorsed or are you just there like chilling? Endorsed. Yeah. Yeah. So I was with, um, who was I? I, I, I was probably there with Dunlop at the time. Okay. So no like uh, Ibanez or like guitar sponsorship then? Just a- I was with Ibanez, not then, but I had an endorsement with Ibanez uh, previously, um, and now I'm an ambassador for for Kiesel. So oh, play, that's sick, yeah, man. Those Kiesel. are sick guitars, dude. I've always wanted yeah. one of those. Those are so freaking expensive, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan, man. Uh, I love the. I play the headless. I've got a, a Zeus uh, seven string model with uh, the Kiesel trim, and. Um, just a, a, a giant giant fan their their guitars um they were previously carven and when i was 18 when i got my first seven string and it was a carven and um it's nice to kind of make my make my way back to that so uh wheeler dealer in the chat it's apparently from funimations telling you that if you ever end up in dallas Word. let them know to give you a little tour of the office yo that'd be pretty sick, sick. um wheeler dealer um figure out a way to hit me up. Um, I would love to do that. And I've got a lot of friends uh, in Dallas, so that would be incredible. So you guys are a pretty successful band, I would say. What are bands in the scene doing wrong and what should they be doing to get like the attention of labels and to, like, further their careers? Uh, great, great, great question. And thank you for that. Um, so it's it, I, I, it's less i think what bands are doing wrong and i think it just kind of goes back to um you know us in the early days right it's like you don't know what you don't know and you don't know sometimes if you're if you're making the right choice so um you know even though obviously we're in a pandemic and and there's not really much you can do in the way of this now but labels want to see you touring so i know our situation was a little bit different but labels want to see you doing it before they they decide to invest anything into you um definitely quality recordings um definitely just quality content in general is what i would recommend just like just like um you know, right now if you're in a band you have to be fucking everything you have to have uh your hand in in marketing you have to have your hand in graphic design you have to have your hand in video editing if you can do all of those things and and create content that's unique and that's engaging then people are going to notice and you know it's again fighting the the algorithms and just using your uh your investment dollars um using your investment dollars wisely. So um, invest into, you know, now it's uh, ads and, you know, sponsored posts and, and all that shit. Um, the, more, the more legit you look, the more legit people are gonna think you are. And that's another big fun little insider thing or whatever of, of you know, the music industry and, and, and all those things. It's like a big perception game. It's like how big does Fake that it till you look? make it. 100%, I mean, you know, obviously, as musicians that doesn't really work out super well because you have to actually be able to play but um the rest of it is kind of just like be be talk about it and then be about it and then as people see that that's what's happening and if you've got good music then you know the, the rest will will follow but have you have to have a focus you have to have um you have to do things with purpose so what's your what's the theme or the look of your band what's um you know all that all that shit you have to have uh you have to have that really really honed in and then you know like i said before just um using your money wisely and uh that goes to merch so you know probably your first merch design you're not going to want it to be a seven color front and back print like long sleeve because that's going to be a big investment you're probably not going to make too much money selling merch if your shirts cost you a bunch of money to, to produce and then a reliable vehicle. That was one of the big things that did us in early too. We were all very broke. We just, 
none of us really came from from any means so we were just kind of got vehicles that we were able to and we went in our first two years of touring probably went through like three or four different vans Damn. and that's what kind of, yeah that's what really put us in the hole monetarily and then you get in the hole monetarily and then it really kind of just spirals so um sorry for the uh verbal diarrhea there but um yeah those are a couple man, things uh so we had one question i wish i remembered who's who asked this but i can't find it again um are you guys over aliens are y'all gonna be going back and talking about them <laughs> um I, I think i mean and again nothing against it i love it i still listen to music every day that that's the theme um i just now really I enjoy too much writing about um, or, you know, having our music be something a little more relatable, something a little more grounding and something a little more kind of um, visceral. And, you know, like I said before, that just like draws, draws emotion and not that that stuff doesn't. Um, I just think that we just found have found a new avenue and I kind of want to pursue this some more. Well, I think it's a good direction to take. It really separates you from everybody else. Thank you. Um. We have a question we ask everybody here. Uh, how do you dress your hot dogs? <laughs> um, very simply, honestly, I I'll either do uh, some some barbecue sauce or ketchup. Okay, just okay. Really, just yeah. Man, nice simple, simple means no uh, no chili or cheese, none of that stuff. No, if if. Uh, if I'm maybe if, if I'm in that place like in Chicago, I forget what it's called that like has like the really crazy hot dog place. Maybe I'll kind of go in and do some like cheese and bacon and stuff like that. But really, just just kind of a very simple dude. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh... Port Portillos. Yep. Yep. That's exactly. Oh, hey, somebody actually knew the name of it. <laughs> Who, Who puts, puts barbecue, barbecue sauce, sauce on, on a hot, hot dog? dog? <laughs> that's not bad. What are you talking about? That's some good stuff. It's a you you do it at a barbecue. There's barbecue sauce right? there. It's a meat. It get. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite barbecue sauce? Um, I like I like. Depends. Sometimes I like the the kind of tangier, maybe some some like a little bit spicy barbecue sauce, or I like a honey barbecue. Um, I'm not. Again, I like that vinegar not, not based stuff, picky. man. The vinegar based ones are the, the best ones. Yeah. Like oh that. yeah. Uh. So what was the last album you listened to? The last album that I listened to. Um, let me, I'm just going to pop Spotify open and see if I've. <laughs> um, hmm. A1 on a hot dog is pretty much just like barbecue sauce, uh, Wheeler Dealy. So like, I think that's <laughs> fine too, man. It's not the best, that's, but that's fine. <laughs> hey man, you know. Love who you want to love and put whatever the fuck you want on a hot dog. You know right, what I mean? whatever like, floats your boat, you know? <laughs> you can tell a lot about who somebody is by what what uh, what they put on their hot dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you put a little bit of stuff on there, then you know, ground it down to earth. If you put a bunch of stuff on there, then uh, it might be a little, uh, a little off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, so the last album I listened to, I've been really into this... Um, this rapper uh, JID. So um, every once in a while, um, probably once a month or maybe more. I, I usually like we'll just throw on a mix on Spotify, but I'll listen to his his one of his latest. It's uh, DiCaprio two, and listen to that front to back because it's it's a great record. Like DiCaprio, like uh, the dude from Titanic, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, really? Uh, the co <laughs> the cover of the album is uh, it's an Oscar. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Uh, it's like a concept album about Leonardo DiCaprio's life or something? I don't think so. I think it's more like uh, kind of like his swag probably. So you know how like there's some rappers that'll say that they're like the young Sinatra or something. So I think he's kind of playing, probably doing something like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, what was your album of the year? Either for last year or this year. I feel like not a lot of stuff's come out this year yet though. Yeah. Um, for last year, it was a little bit of a toss up, but... Um, I, I really, really liked uh, the, the Black Dahlia uh, album that uh, was put out last year, Verminous. Um, again, just some of my favorite guitar work from, from Brandon Ellis and obviously Trevor and the rest of the band just always killing it. So uh, Fearmonger from Beneath the Massacre uh, was so good to see those guys come back and they came back with a super crushing record. 
Um, and we've been, I, I've been kind of like loose friends with those guys for, for, uh, for a long time. And, um, they were in the first like handful of like, um, shows that I went to where I was seeing some like new and, and somewhat like up and coming bands. So I saw them with the faceless and dying fetus and it was a, it was a real sick tour and it was just great to see them back again. Um, and then uh, just give a special sh shout out to uh, the homies in Inferi that put out of Sunless Realms last year, uh, real sick um, EP, and also uh, the weakest among us from Wormhole was another was another fun one. Oh, dude, Wormhole is sick, man. A yeah, the, shout out to Sanjay and, and and those guys. Sanjay's a, another just incredible guitar player. A lot of good choices. Uh, I like your uh, your list. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Cricket Slam says, "Check out Summoning the Lich." Never heard of them, oh, but yeah. they might be I have. Rally. Okay. Yeah, they they just put out a, a new album. I've been seeing a bunch of people post about it. I haven't had a chance to like dive into it, honestly. But um, yeah, I've been hearing those those dudes getting a lot of hype. So good for them. Are they a tech death? I think they're more like. Uh, I keep seeing people say that they're like the new Black Dahlia. Uh -oh. um, so I think it's like melodic death metal. Maybe some some. Tech, you know, again, I'm talking out of my ass because I haven't listened to it yet, but I've just from what I've been seeing. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Um, do you have any uh, merch? So you do have merch and stuff available. Uh, I should ask you to grab some stuff. Uh, what, what kind of merch do you have right now? Uh, we got all kinds of cool shit, actually. So we just did uh, a merch line drop um, probably a week ago now, um, which has that uh, Diablo shirt. Um, if you're a fan of the show Avatar, there's we, we did uh, kind of a little one uh, Avatar theme shirt too. We've got uh, this real sick hoodie. We've got shorts. We've got sweats. Um, we've got icky guy hats. Um, the Diablo shirt. So uh, Diablo shirt in medium. Cricket slams ask absolutely. Um, give me a second here. Where is the gonna... other shirts? Because I see the a the. Uh... The Dragon Ball one on uh, your band camp. I don't see the other ones. Uh, indie merch. Oh, okay. So I just dropped the link um, into the chat there. Um, so yeah, all, all kinds of cool stuff on our, our indie merch. Definitely check it out. And if you're if you're into it, pick pick something up. Okay, sick. Um, it's about all I had to talk about. You got anything else you wanted to bring up? Um, I don't know, man. I appreciate you having me on and uh, asking some 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 great questions. It was uh, it was great chatting, and a big thank you to everyone uh, on Twitch that was hanging out. And um, definitely going to be touching base with uh, your your buddy from Funimation. And, right, Wheeler um, Dealer. Come yeah, hopefully getting a, a oh yeah. There's an Akida shirt in there too. So uh, Wheeler Dealer, that's for you, homie. Oh shit! <laughs> Why don't you have those up on Bandcamp as well? Uh, cause the band camp stuff was is specifically through the label oh. and they, that's just album stuff. So indie merch is like our separate, um, our separate thing. Okay. Shit. That's tight. That's tight. So, uh, if you're looking for some sick technical death core, check out Icky guy. I'm sorry. Icky guy. Right. Uh, the yep. third, uh, the third full link from abiotic, uh, you're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Bandcamp, as well as all the streaming platforms. Are there any social plugs I'm missing? Um, yeah, you can follow me, uh, Abiotic John, on Instagram, um, Facebook. Uh, you know, feel free to you know follow or, or give me an ad or whatever. And um, yeah, fo follow the band if you're if you're into it. And um, you can check us out on YouTube as well. So we've got a channel. You can check out the Artisan Era channel as well. Uh, check all the music videos, guitar playthroughs, bass playthroughs that we just put out. Where uh, if you haven't listened to us, uh, we're a very bass driven band. Um, and uh, our bass, bass player Killian, super talented guy. So definitely check it out and, and pick up Ikigai. You can pick it up on Bandcamp. You can pick it up um, uh, at the Artisan Era website. You can stream it wherever you know wherever you like to stream music. So yeah, uh, thanks thanks to everybody. If you are watching, listening, uh, who has picked it up so far and, and has uh, you know really made it a special release for us. 
Well, hell yeah, man. Um, as for me, find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, YouTube folks, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, tickle the notification bell, and subscribe. Uh, you can also drop my channel follow so you always know when I go live. You can sub to get access to interviews before they hit YouTube and some exclusive emotes. Uh, you can also sub by attaching your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Uh, it gives, you, it gives you a free sub uh, per month. Uh, my next guest is the up-and-coming mathcore band Autour. I, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, kind of like a Converge worship band. Uh, cool. Join us this Sunday the 7th at 7 p.m. Central right here at twitch.tv slash creation for the live cast. Uh, thanks for being here, John. I hope you had a good time. Thanks, man. I really did. I appreciate it, Chris. Hell yeah, and thank you guys for watching and listening.